Damn, guys, welcome to the show, the Mac Pro show. Today, we're gonna be giving the best ultimate performance review of the Mac Pro. We got the base eight core edition right here, Xeon, the best kind of CPU you can get, right? Well, this Mac Pro costs the same amount as this MacBook Pro and this MacBook Pro combined. So, we're gonna be finding out how well this Mac Pro does against these beasts. And guys, be sure to hit that subscribe button because if this channel reaches 1 million subs in the next year, I'll be giving away this Mac Pro to one of you guys out there. All right guys, so the results are in. I'm gonna let you watch the whole video, the epilogue and enjoy every single in-depth review yourself, but I'll summarize it for you. And over here, this is the A-Core Base 580X, eight gigabytes VRAM edition versus the 15 inch MacBook Pro, yeah? The one that was released six months ago and I've paired it up to give it a bit of juice with a Vega 64 eGPU. You never saw that coming, did you? And I've got here the base 16 incher. And you know, some of the results are a bit surprising, I'm gonna say, because this guy is worth the same amount as these two combined. So I got some tests here and I want you guys to guess who won. So first Maya, 3D rendering. Who won? Who do you think won? And now let's hit up the Mac Pro. Let's see how fast it's gonna go. It's running 12, 13 frames a second. This is a joke. 13 frames, we're getting 19 to 20 frames a second here on the 15 inch MacBook Pro. 25 frames a second there. And this guy is going 18 frames a second at the moment. So this 15 inch MacBook Pro 560X is beating out this Mac Pro. The 15 inch i9 MacBook Pro was the fastest at rendering with the eGPU disabled. So just purely on CPU, this guy got more frames per second than this guy and this guy. Are you surprised? I'm surprised. Gaming, Steam, doing some car racing. Right there, I'm going around. This is on ultra, ultra settings. We got 56 frames a second, a nice, beautiful crash. Going straight, this is the 580X on a 2015 game. So 46 frames a second and I'm shaking it. Oh man, boom, shakalaka. That's 37 frames a second on the Mac Pro 580 base. Now over here on the 16 incher, this 16 incher has the 5300M graphics. We're getting 60 frames a second over here. 68, 66 frames a second. 51 frames a second, 55 frames a second. Yeah, so this is in the 40s and this guy is in the 50s. So the winner of the racing games, that's the 16 inch MacBook Pro. This guy, the 16 inch base edition, got more frames a second than this guy with an eGPU. I don't know what happened to Catalina. I don't know what happened to eGPU support, but it doesn't work so well anymore. Anyway, the Mac Pro also got less. Okay, the Mac Pro had to render more pixels on the screens, about 4 million pixels versus 5 million pixels, but slow frame rate. We flipped the script on Windows. Oh, I love playing games. Yeah, gaming's the future. Gotta play, what is that? What do the people play? Angry Birds, yeah, Angry Birds, TikTok, gaming. All right, gaming, yeah. Gaming on Windows, so we're getting around 22 frames a second on the 5300M, 32 frames a second on the Mac Pro, and 19 frames a second on, was it the 560X? 19 frames a second. So over at Intel Power Gadget, we can see that we're pulling in 63 watts on the Mac Pro, and on the i7, we're pulling in 10 watts and on the i9 we're pulling in 9 so there's definitely some sort of reduction of CPU usage due to the pulling in of the GPU on the MacBook Pros but the the Mac Pro is able to utilize the CPU and the GPU at the same time just like a desktop computer would. This guy was getting 10 more frames a second than this guy on Windows. Can you believe that? I can't believe that and interestingly enough Cinebench everyone loves that Cinebench test this guy consistently gets 3,600 on Mac OS, but on Windows it gets 4,000. What is going on? So look at it right there on Windows, 3,923. That's about 300 to 400 points more than Mac OS because 
it uses an extra 20 watts on the CPU on Windows. Here it was pulling 145 watts of energy for the CPU, whereas on MacOS, the CPU was only using up to 125 watts. Confusion? Anyway, good stuff over here. Let's go into the world of coding. So I have right here with me, Multicam Pro, allows you to record up to three cameras at the same time. Look at that. Ultra zoom, ultra wide. Damn, wide. that Mac Pro looks gorgeous. Wow, ultra wide, ultra zoom. Mac Pro City, Mac Pro City. Say it with me, Mac Pro, Mac Pro, Mac Pro City. Mac Pro, Mac Pro, Mac Pro City. Three, two, one, go, go. All right, boom, shakalaka. We have some compilation. It is building. This is done. This is done. This is done. Launching the simulator. But at this, at the same time, compiling the best code for the best apps there is today. It pretty much worked exactly the same on all three. I guess iOS development, not that heavy. But when we hooked on to Unreal Engine, 3D game dev hitting the CPU and the GPU at the same time. They're all exactly at 73. 73. This is a heavy duty game engine. PS3, PS4, Xbox, the new Xbox, PC games, they're all made on this beauty of a game engine. Unreal Engine 4. They're all on the screen. Same speed. Okay, the Mac Pro won. i7 came second and the i9 came third. Now we're doing the shader compilation game and straight away. 2,000 shaders to compile on the i7, whereas the Mac Pro, look at it, only 1,000. 300 shaders to go and the i9 1473 problem is like when you start using the gpu and the cpu at the same time that's where these macbook pros they really slow down because there isn't enough energy to distribute that power comprehensively to the cpu and gpu at the same time so the cpu is getting limited over here on the 16 inch to 35 watts or this guy's done look he's finished the cpu's eating 70 watts on idle not even doing a thing the i7 actually launched Unreal Engine the quickest, but compiling shaders, this guy won, won by about 40%. This guy was keeping up the pace, but for some reason it started thermal throttling. I've had this guy for around four months, so I think I've overused it. I'm gonna book in an appointment with Apple and get it fixed. It was dropping all the way down to 1.4 gigahertz. Way too hot in this room. Regarding heat, now, the fans on this system are quiet AF. I couldn't get the fans to operate whatsoever. Right here, we've got Fan Noise City with a 16 inch and Fan Noise Town with a 15 inch. But this guy, is, it's, it's, it doesn't go off the fans. But there is one little issue. I'll tell you right here, Cole Wine. If you put your ear right next to it. At around this distance, there's a high pitch sound. It's like a chirping sound. And when you tune into it, after around half a meter, you can tune it out. But yeah, there is a bit of coil wine, so I recommend just putting it underneath your desk. Don't worry about it there. We'll get a better GPU, 580X in today's era. I don't know what they're thinking. Next up, what, what, what have we missed? Oh, Logic Pro X. Okay, Logic Pro X. All right, now we're gonna be firing up our creative juices, doing some audio, Logic Pro X. Boom, that's 100 tracks. Can this Mac Pro handle it? Yes, but look, 128 tracks. No fan noise, running seamlessly and smooth. Look at that scrolling. It's nice and beautiful and usable. Can we handle 100 tracks on this 16 incher? 128 tracks on the i7. Let's see. No, you can't do it. This guy can't even get close. So I've got right here 150 tracks enabled. That is three times the amount of tracks you can play on the i7 without the fans going crazy and around two times the amount of tracks you can play on these two systems. So, you know, you can get two systems, 75 tracks each and it will work. But anyway, back to this, can it do 150 tracks? 150 tracks right there running on the Mac Pro. And to be honest with you, that would be impressive if the iMac Pro couldn't already do that. The iMac Pro is two years old, bro, no difference. So if you try doing 160, boom, system overload. And you might be thinking, okay, maybe it's because Apple doesn't like pushing their CPUs. So my friends, let's make the fans on the Mac Pro full blast. Three, two, one, hit it. Sounds like a friggin' jet engine. Beautiful, the amount of friggin' fans you hear, it's not actually an annoying 
noise. It's a very deep, mellow fan noise. It actually feels kind of good. Oh, I'm feeling some nice air in the room. The room's cooling right down. You know, that's, that's actually really nice, pumping that much room. I live in Australia. I don't actually own a fan, I just have an AC. So maybe this Mac Pro is gonna be double useful because I'm saving money on a fan. There you go. Anyway, the fans are a max. Bit of a tangent there. Can it now play 160 tracks? 160 tracks at maximum fan speed. No, makes no difference whatsoever. All right, we, we tried running Cinebench and the graphics at the same time. Now, normally this would kill a MacBook Pro because as soon as you start using the graphics and the CPU at the same time, they compete for that 100 watt limit that these computers can handle. But on this guy, it is a champ. It can handle graphics and CPU at the same time. And I've been asked to do this test by one of my subscribers. So here it is for you. This is the Heaven and Sinbench Destroyer of Worlds Challenge. CPU was still getting 3.55 on average CPU. Gigahertz and Heaven were getting 42 frames a second, 41 frames a second. On Cinebench, it's still doing an amazing job. It's getting 3,000. 450. So when you're hitting the CPU and GPU at the same time, I don't see any performance issues whatsoever, not like what happens on the MacBook Pro, because it has so many watts of frigging power. Guess how much watts of power it was pulling. All right, I'll give you an example. When you have this system off, it pulls in one watt of power. 0.7 watts. What? You know, just to keep it on standby. System off, yeah? When you have the system on idle, it pulls in 100 watts of power. As in nothing's going on? It's 90 watts. What? When you have this system, using the CPU only, it eats 200 watts of power. 206 watts. What? When you have the system using the graphics card only, it hits 300 watts of power. But when you're hitting Cinebench on max and you're hitting the GPU, guess how much watts it was pulling? So this is what it looks like with Cinebench and Heaven running at the same time, 675 watts of power. 700 watts of power. That is seven MacBook Pros. Seven of these guys lined up electricity going to this machine. And in Australia world, guess how much money that costs? That costs a thousand Australian dollars a year. So you could literally, you could, you, that's, that's, a, that's an iPad Pro a year. You better be worth it, bro. Damn, these uh, 14 nanometer CPUs are inefficient. When are they gonna switch over to AMD? We're gonna find out. All right. Next up, we did some encoding. CPU encoding FMPEG. We're converting H.264 into HEVC. And surprisingly, okay, this did win. This did win, but by about 5%. 8.9 frames a second on the Mac Pro, and it's 8.7 frames a second on the MacBook Pro. 15 inch, not even the 16 inch one. The 15 inch one is getting 8.7 frames a second. The Mac Pro is only getting 8.8. .8. So yes, the Xeon is killing it. With its 100 watts of power draw, it's able to render at 8.8 .8 frames a second. That's a 5% difference in CPU performance. You know, if this was the 16 inch i9 MacBook Pro, I can imagine it actually beating the Mac Pro. It wasn't that much faster than these guys. So that was a bit shocking. Anyway, I'm gonna look back on my notes. What else have I got to say? Final Cut Pro, you guys, I forgot. You love, the internet loves Final Cut Pro. Never is a review done on the internet about Mac stuff without Final Cut Pro. So I've got Final Cut Pro. So one thing I will say about the Mac Pro, I've never had this experience with Final Cut Pro before. And that is, it's so friggin' silent. Like I can edit in peace with no worries whatsoever. So this is the video we made with Final Cut. We did our little Christmas jingle. Got a heart condition, get your blood pressure checked too. Mm. And for diabetes, which numbers are good for you? Ear infections, sick notes mm. too. Constipation, who needs the loo? What more can I do? All I want for you this Christmas. Pretty much went around the medical center and filmed this, tested it out. Yeah, Mac Pro, it works really well. Silent AF, it was a beautiful editing experience. Performance wise, yeah, not much difference. Red footage, it ran about the same. Um, this guy ran about the same as this guy. They, they all pretty much ran about the same. I was, it did render out footage faster than a 16 inch, but when I had the i9 16 inch with the maximum graphics, it, the export speeds were exactly the same as this Mac Pro. Interestingly though, so both going well, 15 frames a second, I'd say something like that. 
And then big stutter, big stutter. This one recovers quicker. The MacBook Pro actually had a better frame rate and less lagginess than the Mac Pro. Wasn't expecting that. So if you wanna get kind of like more performance, I don't recommend the base model, unless you're gonna upgrade it yourself, wait a couple of months, get a better CPU. And it's a bit scary times because AMD is killing it on the CPU power side of things. So is Apple gonna stick with Intel next year? Are they gonna swap out the motherboards? Maybe Intel's gonna release a new socket. They like springing that up on us. So pretty much, I love the platform of this system. I love what they've done. It's expandable, all this kind of goodness. But I'm just a bit worried that they might switch out the motherboard next year and then they'll have to get another Mac Pro. Would they do that? Hopefully not, I'm not sure. Gonna find out. Other stuff, the GPU 580X is not that impressive considering that it's, this guy was beating out on some of the tests. This guy, this, this 16 incher using seven times less power was, was eating it out. Not that impressive. Now, you can't upgrade in Australia for $4,000 for the Vega 2, $4,000. That one does 14 teraflops, teraflops, but over here on the eGPU, I've got a Vega 64, I've got that for $500, and that guy does 12 and a half teraflops. So better off just sticking that guy in here. You do need to get a mini eight pin connector to eight pin, and that costs $100 on the Apple Store, which is a quarter of the price I paid for this card. I don't know, I don't know, I don't think, I don't think this makes sense the more I think about it. Anyway, yeah, so eGPU, you can get a Vega 64, that'll be a nicer card probably, unless you need VRAM. If you do, respect. Next, next up, um, storage. I got the base 256 gigabyte storage because that storage is tied to the T2. So I'm probably just gonna upgrade using the PCIe. So that way yeah, the storage is mine to own and I can move it from systems. Don't need to have it forcibly compressed and all that kind of stuff. And I had this guy, this guy's a beauty. It's got 10 gigabit ethernet. It's got two of them in the back. So I was actually connecting it directly to my QNAP NAS drive and I was getting really fast speeds. Anything I wanted to install, I was just installing it directly to the NAS drive. And no, it didn't affect the performance because I ran all the performance stuff on the SSD itself just to make sure there was no bugs. But yeah, I ran the stuff. Other stuff, what is there to talk about? Yeah, the fans, the fans, well, the fans eat up around 30 watts of electricity when they're on. However, they're never on. But guys, I'll tell you something I recommend. Oh, I'll show you right here. I recommend. You keep, keep, keep the system facing this way because there is a way using Max Fans controls to turn the fans on and they go really well. They really cool down the entire room when they're on. Are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I wanna soak up the sun. Oh my God, I feel like Beyonce. It's beautiful, amazing, isn't it? So guys, hope you enjoyed this amazing review, ultimate review of the Mac Pro. I love it. I love what they've done. It looks gorgeous. This, this, this design, just it's, it's very obscene. As soon as you enter the room, it just hogs your focus and it's confusing. I kind of get trippy, crazy eyes when I'm looking at it. I have to break content, look away. So I love what they've done. Obviously there are some irks, like you can't open it up and see what's going on on the side. And you don't get basic cables like an eight pin. You don't get the SATA cables. You need to buy them extras. There's no caddy for hard drives. You need to just buy a caddy, which anyway, there's lots of teething issues, but I'm glad they pulled this system out. The only thing that I'm a bit hesitant of, hesitant of is that the iMac Pro two years old, it's just, it just feels like it's better value. Of course, you can't upgrade it and all that kind of stuff, but that is the situation there. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Mac Pro, Mac Pro, everybody loves the Mac Pro.